Sure, it looks like the middle of nowhere. And it is, but it's also critical to our country's future. So critical, it's earning the nickname America's Lithium Valley. Where Oregon meets Nevada, you get Orovada. Population, 155. Number of gas stations, two, but one of them closed in 1993, and it would have been around in a time most people under 50 won't remember. Did you take a show how long the line was? The gas shortages of the 1970s, when Americans waited hours to fill up. A thing tougher to imagine today with electric cars on the rise and Tesla's Gigafactory just a couple hours south near Reno. But before we dig into what this cutting edge factory and this speck of a little town have in common, let's first talk science, volcano science. Remember when you made one of these in middle school? Well, this little project directly relates to America's national security, America's military, really. It also relates to that smartphone you're probably holding, laptops, Teslas, wind farms, solar power, airplanes, the camera I am using to shoot this story, all of those things use lithium ion batteries. And where is lithium found? In salt deposits and in rocks and sediments formed by a volcano and China. See, the US depends heavily, almost exclusively on other countries for lithium ion batteries. Roughly 75% of that supply comes from one of America's biggest rivals, China. That's also what makes this land in northern Nevada so important. Everywhere you see in this bowl right here are caldera lake sediments that have lithium in them. And it's just a question of um, where do you want to dig? That's Dr. Thomas Benson. He's a volcanologist, a PhD in volcanoes with Lithium Americas, the Canadian company that wants to mine this land. In this ridge there is the McDermott Caldera. Dr. Benson took me on a little road trip to see the place he confirmed holds the future of green energy. So just on the other side of that ridge is essentially where the lithium deposit begins. Exactly, yes. And you can see if you look on satellite imagery from this area, you can see a beautiful circular ovular feature from, from outer space with this giant hole in the ground. And this is an ancient volcano. It's an ancient volcano. It's actually Yellowstone day one. If the government approves a lithium mine here, it could supply the entire U.S. demand for lithium for a very long time. And this is what extends for uh, almost a kilometer below the surface of the earth. And right now we're standing on the largest lithium deposit in the entire North America. Energy security translates to national security. And that has the attention of Washington. The, the project, the opportunity in Nevada is certainly one that um, I think has gained great interest. But we also know that educating Americans, um, really educating the world about the need for, for minerals uh, and mineral security is, is a challenge. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. That's Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, who's one of the biggest champions of America mining its own critical minerals, not relying on China. Still, not everyone loves the idea of mining. It's really specific to Nevada. And the, the tension here in this state is between people who want renewable energy and people who want conservation on public lands. You have said uh, uh, that you are gonna have an executive order that would stop drilling uh, on, on public lands Stop mining, which is a huge industry here. You gotta have lithium, you gotta have copper for renewable energy. How do you do that? I think we should stop all noon drilling and mining on public lands. If we need to make exceptions because there are specific minerals that we've got to have access to, then we locate those and we do it not in a way that just is about the profits of giant industries, but in a way that is sustainable for the environment. That's another prominent U.S. Senator acknowledging the dilemma America has gotten itself into. We want to protect the planet, but to do so, we need lithium. It's one of the minerals critical to solar power, wind power, the whole green energy revolution. We have this perception that mining is bad, but when you think about it, humans, as long as we use things, we need to mine things. So the first humans in this area mined obsidian for arrowheads. We can pick up a rock right here. This is, this is the sediment right here. And so it's sitting here right on the surface of the earth with a little bit of cover. I mean, you're someone who I imagine would consider yourself an environmentalist and you feel good about what's gonna happen here. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I love using my iPhone. I, if I ever get a car, I'll get an electric car, and I would like to know that the materials used in those 
devices come from as environmentally responsible places as, as possible. The proposed mine is known as Thacker Pass, and in just a couple hours, lithium from here could be at Tesla's Gigafactory, where Panasonic makes batteries, or it could be in Reno, ready to be shipped anywhere. This facility, its sole purpose is to extract lithium from the ore. Reno's also where Lithium Americas set up its lab and developed an environmentally friendly way to extract lithium. To ensure that we use very low water, very low energy, as well as emit very, the, the absolute minimum of uh, emissions from our project. But we're quite confident that this will be the world's first and only carbon neutral lithium. It really is a cornerstone for a lithium valley uh, in, 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 uh, in Nevada. I'll let you take credit for that term if it sticks. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> the team of engineers showed me how they rather easily separate the lithium from the rock using mostly water. So most of our lithium is in these very in this very fine powder. And that's a big reason why the Canadian company is excited about the potential profit and the planet. A, a lithium particle travels oftentimes two or three times around the world before it ends up in your laptop computer, in your smartphone, or in your car. And, and that's very inefficient. That creates a lot of opportunity to reduce the carbon footprint and reduce that travel time between source and product. And we've done that here. We, we, we actually generate carbon-free energy from our process, and we have an excess that will sell to the grid. So you've got a mine which could supply 25% of the world's lithium demand, but will the Department of the Interior approve it? America is heavily dependent at this point on other countries for important minerals. But I think we need to recognize that we don't necessarily have to be. Casey Hammond oversees land and minerals management in the Department of the Interior, and he's encouraged by President Trump's support for mining, in particular Executive Order 13817, which the president signed during his first year in office, listing lithium as one of 35 critical minerals necessary to, quote, preserve peace through strength. I'm not old enough to remember waiting in gas lines, but I heard a lot about it when I was a kid and I've seen the pictures and things. We don't want to be at the mercy of other nations for our critical minerals, for our energy sources. There's been a battle or two fought over natural resources. And we need these things, not only, well, very importantly, for our own national defense, at a very literal level, looking at um, weapons and um, other equipment that our military uses. Senator, does the U.S. really want to rely on China or Russia for things which are military needs or just things that we use every single day? Well, it, it was not too many years ago where, uh, as a nation, we were really quite concerned about our, our oil security, our energy security um, from that perspective. But the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot function as a modern society without the minerals that we are able to, to harvest. And that vulnerability is an energy, an energy security issue for us, just as it was with oil. So we have to address it, we have to prioritize it, but there is much, much, much more that needs to be done. Back at Thacker Pass, Lithium Americas could get approval to start working on the mine in early 2021. No coincidence that would be just before a new administration could arrive in Washington. But even a green light in Nevada does not address the other 34 minerals listed in Trump's executive order as critical to America's security. And there's also the issue of actually converting minerals into batteries. Other than Tesla and Panasonic, America really lags in battery production, so the U.S. still imports the majority of the batteries we need. Which brings us to the coronavirus. Remember how at first we were waiting in line at the grocery store hoping that they had toilet paper or a dozen eggs? Well, what if this pandemic got so bad or another pandemic happened and you couldn't get a new iPhone or you couldn't get a battery for that thing that you need every single day? Because that could happen. This pandemic already impacted global supply chains, especially from China, so it's easy to see how it could get so much worse, impacting our ability to get the things that we need every single day.